Metal Gear Solid 2 is the black sheep of the series in many ways. Don't get me wrong, this is a phenomenal game which anyone can tell you as a Metal Gear fan or not is one of the best games you'll probably ever play. However, Sons of Liberty is a very different beast than Metal Gear Solid 1 for two main reasons. One, the technological advances that the PS2 provided between games, and two, the narrative. So to begin the game we reassume our role as Solid Snake two years after the incident of the first game which concerned Foxhound, Shadow Moses Island, Metal Gear Rex and all the other stuff. As part of an anti-Metal Gear organization philanthropy, Snake and Otacon work together as a fringe group with no jurisdiction from the government or public. Their goal is to disarm, destroy and identify Metal Gear variants so that the world might be rid of the terror caused by them. Otacon sends Snake to investigate a US Marine tanker which is supposedly housing a new advanced Metal Gear. Right after boarding the tanker however, a Russian private military group storm the ship and systematically butcher the unarmed marines. As we work our way through the ship we find out that the leader of the group is Colonel Sergei Golukovich, the man who supplied weapons in the Hind D to Foxhound in Metal Gear Solid 1. We also find out that Revolver Ocelot is involved with the attack and that they plan to steal the Metal Gear. And I gotta say that the comparison between Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2 is night and day. Especially when you look at characters like Solid Snake and Ocelot compared to their originals. It doesn't necessarily look fantastic by today's standards, but again, it's held up pretty well and it doesn't look too shabby. So what can Snake do that's new? Well first off, a big difference from the get-go is the fact that you can aim in first person which completely changes the way we can neutralize enemies and interact with the world. We can also slow walk to easily travel across loud surfaces, hang from railings, and Snake starts out with a suppressed tranquilizer gun so it's much easier to start the game compared to its predecessor. The tanker in a lot of ways is a nice tutorial area where we get to battle a couple of bosses and tackle the more basic elements of the AI's behavior. However, as we make our way to the final staging area for the commanding officer's briefing, we find the Metal Gear, codenamed Ray. An amphibious Metal Gear primarily used as a means to destroy rival Metal Gears rather than Rex's capability to launch nuclear missiles. However, as is customary for this series, Ocelot shows up. You know. <sighs> Who goes there? Why are you here? We thought you were with the Colonel. What the? Just to shake things up. Ocelot betrays the PMC and steals Metal Gear Ray, but not before being, shall we say, possessed by Liquid Snake because he's transplanted his arm onto his severed appendage. Yep. The Marines appear to drown in a watery grave as Snake supposedly dies along with them. Fast forward two years and the government has set up an oil treatment plant, the Big Shell, to try and clean up the oil spillages of the tanker incident. However, a terrorist group known as the Sons of Liberty have taken control of the facility, ransoming several hostages and US President Johnson for $30 billion. If their demands are not met, they will blow up the big shell, which in turn will ignite the crude oil in the ocean, causing the world's worst environmental disaster in history. To deal with the threat, the US military sends SEAL Team 10 to extract the president, and Foxhound under the command of Colonel Campbell sends rookie agent Ryden to infiltrate the big shell with two goals. Safeguard the hostages including President Johnson and neutralize the terrorists by any means necessary. I mean it shares a lot of themes from the first game, I mean there's a ransom of money, there's a bunch of hostages, there's a military takeover of a government facility and it wouldn't be a true Metal Gear Solid game without a particularly badass squad of spec ops. And that squad is Dead Cell. A group of the Navy designed to train in counter-terrorism measures. Fat Man, the Emperor of Explosives, Vamp, the Blade Dancing Immortal, Fortune, Lady Luck Incarnate, and their leader, George Sears, the previous President of the United States. The game splits itself up by using the big shells layout to create a focused linear experience with choice for varying paths to achieve our goals. Starting in shell 1 of 2 we find out that the entire base is full of computer nodes which activate our Soliton radar. This means that for the first time that we explore an area, the radar is disabled, which creates a cautious atmosphere every time we first enter a new place, which is a nice change of pace. Raiden may also be a bit of a black sheep in the Metal Gear franchise, but honestly, his story is that of a rite of passage, becoming a child of the virtual warfare world and developing into a fully-fledged soldier with something to fight for. 
Plus, to be honest, he is more agile and athletic than Snake ever was with his ridiculous cartwheels and such, but it also makes sense that Raiden needs help along the way through his mission. Peter Stillman, the demolitions expert brought in by SEAL Team 10, or even Iroquois Pliskin, who is, uh... Totally not Solid Snake. Sorry, buddy, but, uh... You ain't fooling no one. Plus, this game really ratchets up the variety of objectives, mechanics, and gameplay from the first one. To begin with, we have to defuse all of Fat Man's bombs set up around Shell 1. Then we later on get to do swimming sections, disguise ourselves as an enemy soldier to get into the core, use a microphone to identify key hostages, and even go into an escort mission near the end of the game. Now of all this new stuff, the AI is also much better than the original, as they'll investigate movements outside their fields of vision, radio in regularly to prevent you neutralizing key sentries, deploy cipher units to patrol key outdoor locations, and even the boss fights ramp things up from the original. Fat Man keeps deploying bombs while you're fighting him, so you have to keep changing your priorities. Fortune can't be damaged at all, so we just have to survive. Vamp can dodge our attacks if we use auto-aim, and is also an agile opponent. And that's not even mentioning George Sears. Or should we say, Solidus. The youngest of the Les Enfants Terribles clones of Big Boss, Solidus Snake is one of my favorite characters in the series. He's by no means a good guy, but he actually has some really understandable motivations for the acts he commits as the main antagonist of this title. Plus, I mean, I'd vote for him. I mean, what other US president do you know that can do this? Stupid machines! We need a renewed emphasis on civic learning in schools. And our young people need positive role models. Over time, the people of this nation waged a long and sometimes bloody struggle to expand and secure their freedom. Each of you embodies the warrior creed, your devotion, prowess, Moments like these are only further embellished by the awesome music provided by the legendary Harry Gregson Williams as his first offering for the series. The story is more dense than the original, and probably requires most people multiple playthroughs to truly grasp, especially when you consider the subjects that are discussed such as the nature of reality, genetic inheritance, information censorship, artificial intelligences, government conspiracy, shadow ops, child soldier warfare, child abuse, and other such lovely topics. And although some content was cut from the ending of the game due to its release so close to 9-11, it's still a masterpiece of storytelling in video games and a landmark graphical improvement for games to follow. A lot of people dismiss this title just because you play as, you know, this guy. Raiden, what's your status? Colonel, I've got Emma Emmerich here. We've managed to avoid drowning. Good job. But honestly, it is one of the best games I have ever played in part due to its massive amount of gameplay, story, easter eggs, replayability, dog tag collection, VR missions and more. Metal Gear Solid 2 may be polarizing, but it's still an amazing addition to the saga.